Welcome back, my friends, to our My Player Career Mode. I appreciate you all. Thank you all for your continued support, and I hope you're all doing fantastic, having an awesome day. Today, we really get stuck into our first few games as a Milan player. We made our debut for the club in the previous video. That was as a substitute. Well, today, we start our first game for the club. If you missed any of the previous episodes, they will explain our journey to becoming the new midfield maestro in Milan. Our contract was up at Salzburg. We had not completed our objectives and the club decided to not renew our contract, which meant we were free agents, we had options and we chose Milan. We also had the World Cup in the previous couple of episodes. So if you want to see how that went with England, go back and check them out and then come back and watch this video. Our first game of today will see us face Genoa. So let's get right into this. Sit back, relax and enjoy the episode, my friends. Let's go for 750 likes. How good does this team look? We could win so much with this Milan team. This is our first start for the club then. We got two assists in our substitute appearance last time out. Let's see if we can build on that here as Jonathan David. Quick one, two. We unleash the shots. And it's time for our first Milan goal. 11 minutes on the clock. Hello to us. Hello to Italy as well. We were the top scorer for Salzburg last season from midfield, from Cam. We're playing a little bit deeper in a more regular central midfield position in this Milan side. But I still feel like we will score the goals given the opportunity. In off the post. You love to see it. One goal, two assists in two games now. Straight back to it we go then. Jonathan David finding Liao. Back the way of Jonathan David. So much space actually for AC Milan with Bernardo Silva picking out Rafa Liao. And he almost makes it too. Martinez alert. Makes the save. Corner ball Milan. And I don't know if it's because I've just scored. But I really like this away kit that Milan have. Ruben Diaz's header goes goal bound. But it's caught by Martinez and held very well to keep the pressure off Genoa for the moment. But the first 20 minutes of this game, everything suggests it's going to be Milan domination. Benesser picks the ball up here. As you can see, there is a lot of space for me to utilise. We're through again. Now finding Liao once more. He'll find my feet again. Can we get the cross in? We go towards the back post. Jonathan David's there. Another shot on target. Another save. Considering the score is only 1-0, the win percentage just popped up saying, do you know I had a 7% chance of winning this game? As opposed to the something like 84% that was in favour of Milan. Well, it's just got even more because it's 2-0 now as Jonathan David adds the second. And if I'm being honest, it has been one-way traffic all the way for Milan. So the draw probability, as I'm stumbling my words, is probably, well, <laughs> it is why it's there. It's higher now for Genoa, but it'll be no more than a few percentage, I imagine, because Milan are cruising in this game as Jonathan David adds a second. Rafa Liao into the feet of David, back the way of Liao. We continued our run here at the start of this second half as AC Milan go in search of goal number three, maybe. Jonathan David has done really well here to hold off the challenge. He'll find Liao. Liao to David once more. And they take the touch. And I finish with the left foot. As simple as that, Milan have a third. And again, Genoa are really up against it. But this could get even worse for them. You saw how easy it was for Jonathan David to hold off the challenge. And then nobody is marking. Really is poor from Genoa's perspective. But Milan won't care. They are loving it here. Here is Ruben Diaz, calm at the back for Milan. As soon as Genoa get the ball forward, it's one back and we have it to be able to attack once more with Ruben Diaz on the turn. As I'm there, he'll play me. Bar's giving me a little option here towards the right. There's that ball forward. Now Chukweze will continue the ball, the run, sorry, through here as Chukweze finds me, pulling it back for Jonathan David to strike. Blocked by Dragerson, not once, but twice. Oh, but then look at that. It really is that simple for AC Milan. Chukweze will make it 4-0. Dragerson did well initially to block both efforts. But then on the follow-up, he gets caught out as myself and Chukweze put the pressure on. We steal it back. And Samuel Chukweze gets a fourth for Milan. Like I say, he did all right initially, Dragerson, blocking both shots. But then nothing good about what he did next. Conceding possession far too easily. Change made for AC Milan as Mukoko comes on for his debut, replacing Rafa Liao. And Milan here with still 15 minutes to go. Could try and find a fifth, but I imagine the clean sheet is what we are looking for in the game for Mike Minion and our defence. And here comes Genoa looking to change that. It would do nothing really to change the outcome of this game, but what it would do 
is take away that clean sheet. So let's not let it happen. Bernardo Silva finds my feet. Chukweze here now makes that run. We'll play bar. Chukweze has continued his run. Here he is. We are on a hat trick. If he can find me in the middle as well. Chukweze, we've taken control. Oh, <laughs> it is the hat trick. It's a first in Milan colours. Goal scoring from midfield. And the composer shown here as the ball comes into the middle to control it. And then finish is sublime. And that, that is a brilliant way to make your full debut for the club. Got to give credit to my teammates though. It is not as if I'm running past players to score these goals. We are working it really well. What a pass from Chukweze. And full credit as well to uh, Jonathan David there who jumps out of the way. Otherwise he might have blocked it. Five star from Milan. Five star indeed. It has been quite the display from the lads as Barr. Is there a sixth in the game for us? Genoa look beaten, but you have to have some respect and you have to try and make the scoreline as respectable as possible. But at the moment, they are failing to do that because Jonathan David has smashed in a sixth for AC Milan. And what a day it has been for us. And any moment now, that will be the end of this one. What a performance, what a result. And I cannot be happier with how our first full game has gone. A hat-trick as well. We'll see us collect the match ball from this one. As there you go, our first hat-trick for Milan. It took us two matches. One of them was a substitute appearance as well. I realise I've not yet shown you our objectives for this season. So, to be able to renew our contract at Milan, we have to do 41 standing tackles. Maintain a passing rate of 27%, which should be easy. Uh, matches in the starting 11, we need to be in 24% of the games in the starting 11, which again should be quite easy. And if you want to reach a higher wage, we need volley goals and player of the month. So player of the month is something we collected a lot. Volley goals could be quite tricky. We'll see. But um, yeah, there are objectives for the year ahead as we are now into transfer deadline day. So uh, I will update you with any transfers that do happen involving Milan. As I scroll through the team really quickly so we can see all the players who are still here. And I'm hoping that none of these players leave the club. Because if we can keep this team together, it's a team that could do amazing things in the world of football. So let's just make that happen, please. Now there is a huge transfer to tell you about that's just happened on deadline day. Pablo Gavi has gone to Juventus for £133 million. Bastoni has gone to Manchester United for 114 million. So Inter Milan being weakened by the sale of Bastoni, but Juventus strengthening through Gavi. And there is a transfer for us as well, as Per Scherz has joined the club from Lens. So, deadline day finished, team is locked in, no sales, but one new player in the form of Scherz who joins us. And I'm very, very happy with that transfer window. So uh, we've got Gavardiol, Scherz, Diaz. I imagine Ruben Diaz and Gavardiol will still be the start, uh, starting centre-backs, but having Scherz there as well does give us options. And I wasn't actually aware that we would be taking on Juventus today. What a game this is set to be. Oh, and the Champions League group stages have just been drawn. And as I scroll through this, you're probably thinking, Dan, where's Milan? Well, we're not in the Champions League. I don't know what happened last season with AC Milan. But they find themselves in the Europa League, where we'll take on Feyenoord, Dynamo Zagreb and BSC Young Boys. I'm just throwing this out there right now. There is a huge opportunity here for us to win the Europa League at Milan. And failure to do so, for me, is unacceptable. I would put it right here now and say... We are one of, if not the, strongest team in the competition. I mean, Chelsea are in Group A. Marseille, Munch and Gladbach in Group B. Group C, Lazio's in there. Uh, Group D, Aston Villa. Group E, maybe Bill Bow. But like, oh, Manchester United in Group G as well, actually. Maybe not. Maybe it won't be as easy to win as I first thought. But still, real shot at winning the Europa League here. Although I am disappointed we're not in the Champions League. But we will get there again next season, if I'm still here. At least, that's the aim. For now, though, it is Syria action as we welcome Juventus to the San Siro. Not sure what the Juventus team will look like, but I imagine they've got a number of top quality players much like us here at Milan. Gavi, the new man, is starting in midfield for them after signing for £130-plus million pounds on deadline day. So, big game this. An early chance to showcase 
our title credentials. Here is Jonathan David finding Liao. Liao to Benton Kerr. Now finds me. One more here as we find the feet of Bernardo Silva, who's in the area of Juventus and forces Werner into the save. Took it a little bit wider there, Bernardo Silva. He actually had a better chance, but then opted to take the touch towards that wide area. Gavadio's header goes narrowly wide at the far post. I thought that was sneaking into the bottom corner, but unfortunately not. Regardless, what a start here from the home side. And I've noticed as well that from things like goal kicks, whenever we set up in a defensive formation, we are the most advanced of the midfield three. So I did speak about this in the substitute appearance that I made when I said uh, I am looking at possibly having so much creative freedom here in this Milan team. And it seems like that is the case as Liao has found Benton Kerr, who finds Hernandez. Hernandez picks out Jonathan David. It's brilliantly worked by Jonathan David. And we'll finish off as well to make it 1-0 Milan. Where on earth was Juventus' defence there? Initially, I wanted the cross from Teo Hernandez, but instead he finds David. And then David does pretty much lay it on a plate for me as he chips it towards the back post. I still have to finish. But finish we do. Four in two in the Serie A for us now. And that technique, beautiful. Such a strange goal, though, from Juventus' uh, perspective to concede because... In terms of their left-hand side, where on earth was their defence? They didn't pick us up at all. We sort of just ghosted towards the back post. Shelder up here on the ball for them. Milan doing well to keep their shape, though. Now a Penda. It's Luis Appenda as I've taken him out. Probably going to be booked for that as well. 15 minutes in. I am indeed booked for that challenge. So, free kick Juventus. And I have to watch myself now as to not get sent off. That would be an interesting turn of events, wouldn't it? Become the hero for scoring the opener into getting sent off in the game. As that ball goes in, it's away. Vlahovic wins it again, though. Shelder up. He's now on it for Juve. He finds Upenda. Upenda, Gavi, Shelder up! Right back on level terms, Juventus. <laughs> well, the lead lasted long. And it is Juve 1, Milan 1. I expected there to be goals in this one. And we are seeing that in the first 20 minutes. Both teams have struck... Little Mike Minion can do in the goal there to prevent Shelder up from finding the equaliser. Away from Locatelli as we go over to the left-hand side where Liao is with us. His back heel finds me and I'm trying to find an opportunity to play forward. But Juventus are doing a pretty good job here preventing that for the moment as Liao combines with me once more. As we turn, find Benasur. Benasur to Silva to David. The ball will bounce my way. Back out here to Benton Kerr to Liao once more. Benasur, brilliant. Bernardo Silva blocked by Luis Felipe. Important block behind as well. As Rafa Liao goes to take the resulting Milan corner. And he sends it in towards the penalty area. But it's easy for Werner who comes, claims, catches... And can keep Juventus on the ball then. Vardiol. Now Benton Kerr. Benasur. Milan have been the better side here. Although the scoreline is level. We are the team asking more of the questions. As Luis Felipe has gone through the back there of Jonathan David. Just a free kick says the referee. It's in a really good position. And we are given responsibility. Right. Our first attempt then. To try and find something in the way of a free kick goal. Question will be whether or not we can do that. The wall is set. For Juventus. We are looking to take it on though. It is over the wall. And Werner has to prevent it from finding the back of the net. Not a bad free kick. It's on target. It's a corner for Milan. It was a little bit too far out I think to really go for that. But you know me. I'm willing to try those sort of free kicks. As the loose ball is now with me again. We'll play inside to Gavardio. Giving away to a pender. Break could be on here. And it might well cost Milan. We look like we've got players back though. Behind the ball. As that little back heel has beaten me. Shelder up. Forward to Vlahovic. Now Luis Openda. Openda to run at Milan. He's got the ball here and he's tried to go around me, but I'm having absolutely none of that. As Bernardo Silva now to take Milan forwards into the final few minutes of this first half in what has been a tight contest, but Milan have edged it. Not, though, in scoreline. As we tried to play the ball through to Jonathan David. Now Rafa Liao takes over. It's Benton Kerr. Teo Hernandez down the left. It's Liao, though, in the area. It's blocked. It's Benton Kerr with another shot. Juve defending well. Shelder up away. Can we get the header back in? We do. It was towards Jonathan David and the referee is blown for half time. Jonathan David was in. Interesting change for Juventus. As Sadio Mane is on to replace Shelder up the goal scorer. I actually think that Shelder up has been probably Juve's best player in the sense when they've had the ball. In terms of when they haven't, which has been a fair amount this game. It's been one of their defenders because they have been really good at preventing Milan 
from getting themselves back in front. That's nice, though, to find me as we'll play Ben Assur. Now Bernardo Silva could find me one more. He does. Pulling it back for Davids. Werner saves. It's Milan who are well and truly asking the questions and are knocking on the Juventus door. But at this moment in time, cannot find a way through. It's the corner, which we send in. Oh, it was a decent delivery. Just no one's there with the header, though. Liao finds Benton Kerr. Benton Kerr towards myself. will drive into the Juve penalty area, trying to pull it across. It's blocked. Locatelli has it back. And I love games like this where they're really tightly contested. What I don't love, though, is when you're on the defeat of one of these games. I'm pretty certain Juve have had one shot, and it's the goal that they've taken. So other than that, it's been all Milan, he says. And now here's a pender to Gavi. Two shots, two goals. Juventus lead 2-1, 63 minutes in. I can't actually understand how we're losing this game. Literally. I said for their, for their defensive error, didn't I? When I scored the opener here, it was poor defending. Milan switch off for one single minute. And Appenda finds Gavi. And that's what you get when you pay £130 million. Pounds. Here's Medina as Barr is with him. Advantage played by the referee. Medina and Barr. It's a free kick given the way of Juventus. 15 minutes to go. Time is not on our side. We find ourselves 2-1 down. Having given little the way of Juventus. Needing to find a response to try and draw level. We do not deserve to lose this game. But as it currently stands, that is what will happen. Mike Minion goes long with the goal kick. It's there to be one in the air, but it's Bremer who comes away with it for Juventus. Now Locatelli. Locatelli backwards towards Goretzka, who's come on to play centre-back, surprisingly, here for Juventus. Marquinhos. Goretzka. Goretzka forward towards Locatelli. Locatelli on the turn. Picks out Gavi. Gavi now then tries to find the ball out wide. Zaniolo somehow wins that head. Vlahovic sends it the way of Gavi. I should have tracked his run. I didn't track his run. That's my bad. Gavi, brilliant little touch. And somehow... Mike Minion saves, but I don't know how Gavi managed to get that shot after we should have dealt with it. My apologies for not tracking his run, but I actually thought Teo Hernandez was going to win the header when the ball went out to the right-hand side. Zaniolo from the Juve corner. We are being so frustrated here. It's incredible as Juventus will get a throw deep in our half. Mane, Channel Oglu, Bar wins it. Here's Ruben Diaz then. Forwards towards Chukweze. Right, Milan, this is your moment. Locatelli's in strongly. He wins the ball as well. We're straight back up, though. Unal's ball out wide to Samuel Chukweze. Chukweze needs support to start arriving. It's Chukweze to pull it back. I went first time. It's blocked. Benesur picks up the ball. It's now still with Milan. But we still got work to do to find this chance. Here is Liao. Liao. Now to Teo Hernandez. To Benesur. Is the ball still here? Can we finish? How is it not going? Why does they just stand there and block it? No way is it still here for us. Oh, it's over the bar. Oh. That, that sums it up. I have so little idea as to how we've lost this. Well, actually, I know because Gavi scored, right? But that's, you get what I'm saying. We have, we have dominated this game. And somehow lost 2-1. I'll show you the match facts. Juve did improve, but I think they only had four or five shots. Wait till you see how many we had. All right. I said we dominated. Maybe not as much, but still, we don't deserve to lose the game there. 13 shots to five. And yet it finishes Juventus 2, Milan 1 in a tight, tight contest at the San Siro. Disappointing, but we'll play them again and... You bet that I am very much looking forward to getting revenge against them when we go to their place. And the scenes inside the dressing room are one of disappointment for Milan. They know how much that game we played well and yet nothing from it. We've got a break from club football for the moment as we have some European Championship qualifiers with England. First up is Ireland. This is Smallbone down the left-hand side for Ireland. Back towards Manning. Manning, edge of the penalty area is Cullen. Cullen will look to shoot. The shot goes through, but it's easy for Aaron Ramsdale. No problem whatsoever for him to claim that ball. England now have it. Looking for a chance of their own through Rice. Alexander-Arnold here to Saka. Saka has my run. Spots me. Plays it. Alexander-Arnold there. Is through. He'll go towards Bellingham. He'll find Rashford. Rashford! Oh, it deserved a finish at the end of it. It was sublime from England, the move. Unfortunately, though, Marcus Rashford just couldn't quite hit the target. I think England might be suffering a little bit 
following the exit of the World Cup to Portugal because we were lacklustre in the first half and at the start of the second, very much the same. Ultra attacking has been applied by Southgate, but other than that Rashford chance following the brilliant England move, we haven't created anything else. We don't deserve really to win this. Neither do Ireland. A draw would be a fair reflection of the game into the final 10 minutes. Here is Harry Kane. He's popping up as a CDM, honestly. Why is he so deep? Here, though, is Foden to Bellingham. Bellingham, nice ball. Ben Chilwell's cross goes in. O'Shea heads away. Harry Kane, you've got to get there first. He hasn't done. It's too easy for Ireland to get out there. England really are struggling here. And what we definitely do not want is one counter-attack that sees Ireland go in front. As four minutes of time remain. Ferguson over on the right. Away from the challenge. Crosses, goes in. Cannon heads it goalwards. He's onside. He should score. And booked from earlier challenge. Tell you what, that is a let-off for England. Ireland should be leading. Cannon, what a chance and wasted. There is full time. Ireland nil. England nil in the first European Championship qualifier. Can just put that down to the hangover from the World Cup, I guess. But we've got to be better in match day two, in which we play Scotland at Wembley. Here is McTominay for Scotland towards Hickey. Seven minutes left of this first half. Scotland... Nil, England nil. Once again, England really struggling to create anything. And there's just nothing really going on in front of us when we do get the ball. Harry Kane keeps dropping really deep. And that's meaning we haven't got an out-and-out -out striker to find. You know, so I'm not saying that's the reason why we have been so poor. But it doesn't give us much to be able to find in an attacking sense. And Aaron Hickey goes closest as the half-time whistle is looming. And Scotland looking to finish this first half by scoring to put themselves ahead. It's McGregor. As they go short from the corner with Gold. Now King on the turn. Stone steps in, but it's Gold trying to find the ball through. Ramsdale's quick and alert to meet it. Half-time, nil-nil. So poor from England. I have noticed that whenever I play games on three minutes a half, which is what I'm doing for these European Championship qualifiers, our team seems to play worse. I don't know what it is, but we just don't click half as well as we can. And I don't know if it is down to the three minutes half or if it's just me kind of psychologically thinking that. But yeah, we always seem to play worse, no matter what team I'm on, whenever I put three minutes half, which is what I've done for these European qualifiers, with them not being so important, but still important enough. Um, they are important, of course, if you fail to qualify, but the likelihood of that is, I want to say slim, considering that I've always qualified. Who knows, this could be the first time that we don't qualify, Saka. And what I mean by that as well is we, are, we haven't even seen an England shot yet in this game. And as I say... I'm not saying, oh, we're offside. I'm not saying it's because of the three and a half, oh, sorry, three minutes a half that we're playing. But how have we gone 72 minutes into a game without seeing a shoot? Just one shot, please, England. Just one shot is all I'm asking for. It's not a lot, as Kane can't even find the feet of Saka. Oh, man, what is going on with us? These two games we played on international duty, appalling. We might concede here, you know, McTominay. Down the right-hand side. Now Conway. Conway to Anderson. Anderson. McGregor trying to do our best to prevent the shots. As we need to win it back and actually find a chance of our own if we can. But with two minutes left plus the injury time, it's not looking likely. Bellingham's done well there to win it for us. We turn. Play Shaw. Shaw. One more. Bellingham. One additional minute. The ball has got to go forward because we're out of time. And that's full time. I can't actually believe in 90 minutes of football... Albeit on three minutes and a half, England have not registered a shot on target. I wasn't even joking. Literally, one shot in 90 minutes, and it was for Scotland. And I don't like to end the episode with those matches because they weren't the most entertaining. But unfortunately, my friends, that's all we've got time for today. So I do appreciate all of the support, and I hope you've enjoyed the episode, regardless of how the previous two matches with England went. We did well at the start of the episode. 6-0 win over Genoa. Then we had a decent performance against Juve. Don't feel like we should have lost that game, but we did. 2-1 defeat, but we'll bounce back when we go to their place and try and beat them there. We've got so many more Serie A matches to come. And the two games of England being 0-0 draws, well, disappointing and not good enough again. So uh, I won't play on three minutes and a half in the European Championship qualifiers we have left. See if that changes things. Until next time, though, a massive thank you for watching. If you are around here, like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below. Over 60% of you watching my videos at the moment are not subscribed. I would massively appreciate if you could change that. Activate the notification bell as well so you don't miss any of the future episodes on the channel. Stay safe. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Look after each other. 
and I'll catch you all back here for another My Player episode very, very soon. Until next time, adios!